Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos and as promised we're carrying on with overhauling the LT230T. On the channel page of our YouTube channel we have a playlist Land Rover Transfer Box LT230. You can even Google this and click into it. Basically we start off quite easy and then start going through more complicated stuff and into the overhaul. Basically, for overhauling any transmission unit, you're going to need something like a press and some pullers. The press we have here is a 10 ton press, which is sufficient, and we also have a puller. Now, we don't have time in this tutorial to explain what puller we're using. I will explain it in a video later. However, without a puller, you might use a different technique to get the bearing race off. However, this bearing is very difficult. Looking at the playlist, which we will be building, so keep an eye on this, we kick off with looking at the internals, replacing the input gear, fitting the intermediate gear, replacing the bearings, which is part one and part two. These are the bearings for the front and rear housings. Right, before we kick off, we're just gonna jump onto the Paddocks website. And usually what we do is go parts and accessories, look up our vehicle, and then go under the subsection, i.e. gearbox, transfer box. So what we find is a load of nice, pretty pictures of parts that are available, which is all well and good, but it's not even half of the story of what is actually in the store of Paddock. So looking at the top right hand corner of the page, you'll find a search engine, which is actually much improved from their older website. So we'll go on to, first of all, a parts um, microfiche and look up something. Um, we'll go for number six, which is a nut. Now, as you know, with microfiches, you have to do a little bit of work to find the right part number. We're looking for number six, which is FRC 7970, which is a nut. And there are no changes on this, so it's constant on the uh, LT230. Jumping back onto the Paddock website, we can then type in the parts number, and we see we've already got suggestions there. 7970, okay, so it's there. Look, you can see that. If you leave a space in between the parts numbers, it tends to disappear and you don't find anything. So it's just one constant number. Ah, and what we've got here is this product has been superseded. So go ahead and click on the image and we find that we have the part that we need. So with our parts manual, Microfish and the Paddock website, we're okay for parts. Okay, so on to the issue in hand. Basically, I've stripped and cleaned this transfer box so it's easier for tutorials. But go ahead and take the input gear out first of all, which is quite easy. The sump's already been taken off, so we'll get this out of the way. Next thing we want to do is get the intermediate shaft off because we will not be able to get out what we need to with the intermediate gear in place. So it's basically taking this plate off. Right then, so the rear housing, once you've got the handbrake drum off and the back plate is held on by these four bolts here, you have a, a ring of bolts around it and you can remove this whole shaft. I've taken the flanges off just for convenience, however, basically it's easy enough to just slip out once the bolts are undone. Okay, so that's one part of our unit that we're trying to uh, get to. Right, so what I'll do is unchuck the unit and turn it round so you can see that we're going to go to the front housing. Before we take the front housing off, we need to remove the selector shaft, which is here, and also a detent, which is down here, which you'll find it has a hex key. It's either 6 or 7 mil, I can't remember off the top of my head. In there is a spring and a ball bearing. Now, I've been in here before and I actually lost the ball bearing. So I'll have a little bit of a quick check. Number 22571146, ball detent manual transmission. And I'll just have a quick jump onto the paddock website. Put the number in here. 57114.6. Which is there. And yes, they have a ball bearing, so that's another part to order from Paddock. If you use a magnetic screwdriver, you should get both of them out. Then remove these bolts here, and you'll be able to get your selector housing, your high low selector housing, um, off. Once that's off, you can then remove the front housing. 
Okay, front housing will either be sealed with a gasket or some sealant. Be gentle when you're prising it apart. As you can see here, I'm using a screwdriver, but not using a screwdriver and a hammer. Basically, it might be the selector shaft that's holding it in place. Once you've got a grip, it should come out like so. There's nothing else holding it there. This is the differential unit that we're after. We still can't get this out, however, because we need to remove the intermediate gears. And I'll show you that it's actually obstructing the gear section here. It won't come past the middle gear. So we'll get the center um, peg out, or the shaft, and then we can lift out the intermediate gear. You could use a little bit of rope if you leave the input gear in. However, with your hand in the PTO um, takeoff hole, you can push the gear out and you will have two bearings and a center collapsible spacer that you can keep like this all together. Right, so basically now that we've got to this position, turn the unit back over and we can lift out this whole unit in one piece, like so. Okay, so basically you will have the selector shaft and yoke here. You can take that off. It just slides off like that and put that out of the way for now. The most difficult bearing is the one on the front, closest to the diff and the bolts. It's very difficult to get behind the bearing race and pull it. So with the pullers we have available is to um, pull the bearing cage. Now it Sometimes will pull, sometimes it won't. In this case, it's not. It's actually distorting the roller cage uh, to the point that it's actually made the bearing unserviceable now. We'll carry on pulling with the puller. And that is still, as of yet, pulling the cage completely off. So I'll show you this. This is a bit of a disaster, but this is what you may find sometimes when you're dealing with getting bearings off. Now, there is a solution to this, and what it involves is removing the cage and the rollers, either cutting them or pulling them off, and taking three bolts out, and this will be where the puller legs are. Now, you can see what type of ends I have on the puller here. They're quite um, easy to get into a narrower space. So I've got one, two, and then the third bolt, which we will remove, it's 17 mil. Once that's removed, we can then get the legs behind the bearing race and get a positive grip on the race. You can see the puller also has a block of steel which is pushing against the shaft and using as leverage to pull the bearing race off. This is actually quite tight. There are other ways of doing this. You could actually weld a bead of weld all the way around the bearing race and that will loosen it off so it can basically drop off by hand. But this way, you can do it without heating any of the surrounding metal up. So there we go anyway. The bearing race has been pulled. This gives us access to remove all of the bolts. And then we can then split the unit in two. Okay, what I'll make you aware of, there are markers here which have to go together when you put it back together. This is your differential unit. So you have your pins, you have your um, planetary gears, and you also have some, uh, well, are they thrusters? What washers, should I say? And then in this part of the unit, you have your sun gear, like so. This has a, um, a thrust washer underneath. We'll look at this later on when we reassemble. Of course, we always want to make things slightly better, and we have a stronger set of pins here, which we're going to replace. This is available from Ashcroft Transmissions for about £45. Right, so we need to look at the uh, bulk of this gearing unit. On the top here, it's retained, first of all, with a nut. Okay, it's not a normal nut, it has two flats on it. It needs to be removed before you can remove the gearing and the bearing from the shaft. So basically this measures in at about 57 millimeters across the flats like so. And of course there is a specialist tool available for this. However that is very expensive so we have to find an alternative. You could use a chisel and with a sharp glance actually knock it around. This is staked, so once it's unstaked, it can then be screwed off. However, we need to do it up again to a certain torque, and I've adapted with some grinding engineering, which is just basically cutting a socket up, making a slot in it like so across two flats, 
and then we have a tool ready to undo and do up this nut. Using a piece of rag in the vise, this makes the jaws a little bit softer. I'm clamping the low selection gear, which has been selected, and this will enable us to be able to unscrew the nut with a tool. The socket itself is actually a hub nut socket that we got from Paddock Spares. Um, once we finish this job, we might be able to cut it down and still use it as a, a, a hub nut socket. But at the moment, this is more useful for taking this nut off. And for the fraction of the price of the specialist tool, we have something that we can keep for the future. Before we go ahead and remove this nut, make sure your units are well, somewhere near clean. And then with the dog clutch in the middle so it's not engaging the gears, we can start to assess any damage and wear that is on this unit. Now, moving the gears, you can see there's a little bit of play, and this could be a cause of concern, so we'll note this and then check it once we've stripped it. Well, you'd have guessed by now that you need to push the shaft out to get the gears and the bearing off. It's actually the bearing that's holding this gear set into place. So we're going to use a socket which doesn't quite fit over the width of the shaft, as you can see here, and then just basically with the press, push it out and you can see that we're using the low selection gear and pushing the shaft out from the center you'll find this bearing is not as tight as the one on the other end but make sure that when you're pushing it out that you don't get your hand trapped and you can catch the shaft unit here okay you don't want it dropping on the floor and causing damage so what we have that we've removed is the bearing we'll have the high selection plus a bush and then you'll have your dog clutch underneath that. Ideally with the dog clutch, you really want to keep this together, the outer sleeve and the inner part so that you can match them up later, okay? The gear that's the largest is the low selection gear and it doesn't have a bush, it runs direct on the shaft. Planetary gear shafts, you can lift them out with a screwdriver like so. If you're not going to do a conversion, keep the gears together with the shaft. Okay, so that's that one removed with all the components kept in the right place. And then you'll do the same, lift this one out. They actually do stick in place quite well, and you need a screwdriver every time you pull them out. You should know this, that paraffin is used for cleaning any type of uh, mechanical stuff, especially gear sets, and I'm using a pair of general purpose gloves here which are chemical resistant. They're pretty fantastic for paraffin washes. Paraffin itself will dry your skin out and it will crack if it's subjected to it for long periods of time, so keep that in mind. Plus there's some nasty stuff in worn oil and grease. So clean all the components up and then we'll go ahead and check them in the next video.